it up with Sienna and part two of my episode with Jack McBrayer. And now um, I want to talk a little bit about Hello Jack the Kindness show. So um, I actually love it. I think it's so it's like such a good show. I have seen I actually watched like I was like I wanted to like watch it to get some inspiration. I ended up watching all seven episodes of it. I thought it was amazing. That is the that is the kindest thing. Sienna, I worked really hard on that show and it came from a very personal place. I mean, the world was kind of beating me up. I'm glad yeah. I'm you're not reading too much of the news, but sometimes the news will bum you out. Yeah. And it felt important for me to put out some content for younger viewers to, I don't know, remind them that we don't all have to be jerks. You know? <laughs> I'm kind of giving up on grownups, but I'm like, come on, kids, y'all don't be jerks. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I love it so much, and I know it's, like, mostly written for younger kids, and honestly, I, like, it's something, like, I have little cousins, and um, my, and too, and, like, I feel like it's a show, like, I obviously love it, so I'm sure they would love it, too, Um, and I know it's, like, written for younger kids, too, but I honestly loved it so much. Tell all your friends, tell any kids that you're babysitting, like, watch the show. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. And actually, one funny thing is, it kind of reminds me, and I'm sure it may have been probably an inspiration for you, is it reminds me of um, uh, Mr. Rogers, um, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. And one thing that's actually funny, a little another connection here, is I interviewed Mr. McFeely from Mr. Rogers. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, you're very good at connecting. I know, right? Okay? <laughs> That is really wild. Oh, how special that must have been. And yes, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood was a huge inspiration for Hello Jack. Yeah. Like, huge inspiration. I am no Fred Rogers. I make no claims to be, but like yeah. it was important for me to honor his message. And, you know, he was able to accomplish some really wonderful things with his show. And I was like, if I can even come close to that, then I will have feel that we've succeeded. So please keep watching tell any younger cousins friends of the family whatever yeah definitely i'm sure they would love it too i mean when i was a little kid you know we didn't have the streamers and everything you had like three channels and so it was very easy to find mr rogers neighborhood and he was on every single day and so he really did just become part of your life yeah and he really made an impact on a lot of people especially like my age yeah <laughs> <laughs> And were there any other like inspirations like for those TV shows? Yes, Mr. Rogers was definitely the main one, but also like I loved cartoons growing up. Um, I wanted to incorporate animation in some capacity. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood had a land of make-believe where he used puppets. But what was cool about that, Sienna, was he was able to tell stories or even kind of teach lessons that were a little more abstract. So if you wanted to talk about something that was maybe a little scary, he could do it with puppets to make it a little gentler, you know, make yeah. it a little, give it a little cushion there. Mm -hmm. so, um, because I didn't want to completely copy him and uh, use puppets. I was like, I do love animation. What can we do to incorporate animation to have these more like fantastical elements? Um, and, you know, and I would love to be able to do more where we can just like have conversations that are a little bit more abstract or if it gets a little scary or something like that. Yeah. Maybe Maybe animation can be a way to soften that and make it easier, an easier pill to swallow. Are you still working on more episodes? Well, this is where it gets tricky because, uh, you know, everybody likes to be very secretive about that. Yeah. We filmed a number of episodes uh, and Apple has launched seven episodes. And so, oh, how do I answer this? I, I look forward to more episodes becoming available in the future. Yeah. <laughs> Is that vague enough? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, we, we film a certain number and then, you know, each streamer is very, um, they're able to determine how they want to divvy out the episodes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you later. <laughs> <laughs> Given like what's going on in the world right now and like how you said, like there's a lot of like stuff that's going on in the news that's like kind of hard to like deal with and stuff. Um, if you if Fix It Felix was a real person, like in real life, um, what do you think like he would be focused on fixing in the world? Whew, that's a big question. <laughs> Hammer, so infrastructure. Let's, go, let's, <laughs> go, let's fix those bridges. Um, 
But yeah, it is amazing when you think about like what is going on in the world. Um, here in Los Angeles, we have a really, really bad homeless situation here. So, mm-hmm. and you know, these are complex issues. So it's not like F- Felix can just take his hammer and like, you know, ta-da, a house for everyone. Um, but, uh, and it is interesting because I think about Hello Jack. So here, I'm going to like cheat my answer. If Fix It Felix is was a part of hello jack i like i like dealing with people first i like dealing with the human beings and and making sure that we're celebrating compassion and empathy between each other because then i think we'd be able to find solutions to some of these other problems but let's work on being good people first and then i think the others can fall into place that might sound a little naive, but you're 12. What do you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a great answer. That was an amazing answer. Thank you. I mean, I was like, let's 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 start with the people first. Let's take care of each other. And then we can move on to highways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. So um, I have two um, fun uh, games and I'll start with this one. So this is called Rapid Fire, and it's five questions. And don't and I'll, don't like get stressed about it either. Be like, <laughs> um, they're like it's like just you like some are like this or that. Some are like what do you like off the top of your head. So um, we're just gonna go for it and let's just go for it. <laughs> okay, ready? Okay, right. London or Paris? I thought you said lemon or pears. Wait, <laughs> no. Or Paris or London or Paris? London or Paris. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm going to say London. I spent six months there in 2019 and met some of the finest people I've ever met. So I would say, yeah. I would say in the summertime, but the sun doesn't shine over there. <laughs> <I'm in> sunshine. <laughs> um, if, you came back, if you came back as a dog, what kind of dog would you be? Corg, is it corgi or corgi? 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 It's like corgi, I think. Maybe. I think it's corgi. Maybe. I'm not sure. I know they're super cute. I would want to do research about, like, I know that pugs, because of the shape of their nose, they have, like, lung issues. I want to make sure I don't pick a dog that has, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, going to, you know, kick the bucket in a month. <laughs> <laughs> also, too, I think Yorkies are super cute. So, yeah, yeah let me just. Yeah, and what is your favorite candy? Ooh, um, Almond Joy. Ooh, that's a good one. Some people don't like it. I think coconut is very polarizing. Either you love it. I love coconut and chocolate. I think it's a great pair. I always get coconut cake for my birthday cake. (laughs) And Beatles or Rolling Stones? Beatles, with all due respect to the Rolling Stones, Beatles. Yeah. Um, If you had a superpower, what would it be? I thought about this. It used to be invisibility and flying would be cool. I want to do teleportation. Oh, that's a good one. Where I could just like blink my eyes and then be in the Bahamas or something. <laughs> I think part of it is just when you get older, you just get like stressed out with travel time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't have time for this. Blink. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <laughs> Well, those are some great answers. So now if you have time for one last game, um, this is actually, this is Mad Libs, but Wreck-It Ralph edition. Okay, let's do it. So, um, but so I'm going to like say like the noun verb, adjective and that, and then I'll, I'll write them down. And um, we're, then I'll like say what the original quote is from Wreck-It Ralph, and then we'll see what yours is. <laughs> Okay, just so you know, I haven't seen Wreck-It Ralph in a long time, so I'm not going to remember everything. Okay, so first I need a noun. A noun. Tomato. Okay. Okay, um, noun. Another noun, let's say umbrella. Okay, umbrella. Okay, um, one more noun. Okay, uh, 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 skyscraper. Skyscraper. Okay, now we need a verb. Verb, uh, swim or swimming, whichever fits. Okay, uh, yeah, it doesn't, I'll do swim. Um, adjective. Green. 
green. Okay. Um, noun. Uh, 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 rainbow. Okay, rainbow. Verb. Um, uh, 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 skydive. Okay, skydive. Oh, and another noun. Um, um, lobster. Okay, lobster. Um, one more noun. <laughs> Light bulb. Light bulb. Okay. Um, and now a plural noun. Okay. Uh, crayons. Okay, crayons. Okay, done. So now, do you want to hear the like original quote first, or the one you did? Let me hear the original because I don't even know what I've what I've butchered already. <laughs> okay. So the best part of my day is when I get thrown off the roof because when the nice landers lift me up, I get a perfect view of Sugar Rush and I can see Penelope racing. The kid's a natural and the players would love her. Glitch and all, just like I knew they would. That's so sweet. Oh, now you made me ruin it. What does mom say though? <laughs> okay. The best part of my tomato is when I get thrown off the umbrella because when the skyscraper swims swim me up i get a green lobster view of rainbow and i can skydive and i can skydive wait oh wait i, one, I think i missed it up. wait okay oh. wait, what should we do all right the best part of my tomato is when i get thrown off the umbrella because when the skyscraper swim me up i get a green the, a green view of rainbow and I can skydive lobster racing the, the light bulb is unnatural and the crayons love her glitching all just like I knew they would oh my god <laughs> what have you done <laughs> god I'm an idiot some of those would have worked though because I think skyscraper you know when they push me off the when he's because in, when the skyscraper swim me up, swim me up. If I would have said skyscraper for a different noun just on accident, I wouldn't have known, right? Yeah, yeah. Like when I get thrown off the skyscraper, yeah, that would have worked. Oh, yeah, that's a. I this is actually the first time playing this game. I like it a lot. It's very fun. Oh, I mean, I, I look like a fool, but guess what? I always look like a fool. <laughs> that's my job. <laughs> Well, it's been so much fun talking to you. I learned so much about everything, and you're just such a fun, kind person, and I love talking to you. Yeah, this was a lovely interview. I wish you continued success on all of this. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much, Jack. I had a blast talking with you. And now, before we search it up, here's a quick fun fact. Did you know that director of Wreck-It Ralph, Rich Moore, was inspired to create the character Vanellope after reading Sarah Silverman's memoir, The Bedwetter, stories of courage, redemption, and peace? And now it's time to search it up. Let's see. Oh, Tina Fey, who was in 30 Rock with Jack McBrayer, was also in Mean Girls. So I'll be seeing you next time to talk about Mean Girls.